carbon monoxide alarm activation. My name is Alan Hart and in today's video I'm back at the National Gas Centre for Excellence. I'm here with Michael and we're going to go through the IGM guidance for CO alarm or carbon monoxide alarm activation and this is guidance for gas engineers so if you go out to you get a call from a customer that's had an alarm go off then hopefully this video will help you, help you today if you've got any questions as always please put a comment below and if you can put a thumbs up on the video really appreciate that as well thanks alan welcome to this video at national gas center for excellence on um to cover part of british standard 7967 so i was contacted recently by a colleague one of their engineers had been out and he'd identified a, a, a situation within a boiler where the, there was it was spilling products of combustion but he wasn't sure he, he couldn't say for certain that it was so the question was what can they, what should this engineer be doing what should he be doing while he's there so this engineer didn't have cmddae1 or any other relevant testing qualification he was a you know your average engineer his competency was extended to core and four basically so he had his, his, his cm1 and, and, and ccm1 but he didn't have anything other than that in terms of cmt day one or above now it, it raised the question what should an engineer do in that situation what what's the correct procedure if you've got a situation where you've had a customer's called you because an alarm's operated the co alarm or maybe there's been a report of fumes the customer feels like they, you know, there might be an issue that they, they feel dizzy drowsy nauseous um, and they might suspect CO poisoning. So the, the customers generally don't know that there are engineers out there with the relevant competencies for CMDD1, etc. Et However, what they're generally gonna do is call a, a, your average engineer. So there's two different trains of thought and luckily Kane have recently released, um, a, a, a brought to attention a, an update from iGEM on um, British Standard 7967. Um, We'll make this link available in the video for anybody who wants to look at it. But this should hopefully give engineers out there the competency to be able to deal with that situation and not be flustered by it or worried by it and, and certainly not shy away from it. And more importantly, assess it properly, correctly and safely. So we're going to take each case on its merit. The first one we're going to start with is a report of an alarm, a CO alarm is operated. Using the flow chart here, the engineer arrives on site and he is there because an alarm's operated. So we're gonna be following the left-hand side of this flow chart, an alarm's operated. The first thing the engineer is going to do is go to the alarm that operated, the CO alarm, and press the button, see if it activates. If it does activate, which we're assuming it will, then therefore we're gonna say, well, okay, is the alarm correctly positioned? Is the alarm fitted as per manufacturer's instructions? If it is, then we need to go down the route of establishing whether there's been any sort of report by the customer. Has there been any symptoms? Have, have they, you know, Mrs. Smith, have you ever, do you, do you feel nauseous? Did you ever get headaches or anything like that? It, it's, you know, what, who, when, why? That's what you want to know. If there's something that the customer gives you that leads you to believe there might be an issue with regards to CO, then we need to be adequately testing that situation. And how we do that is this section here. We conduct a visual inspection of all appliances in the property. Once we do that, that visual inspection is pretty much location, stability. Is there any, you know, is there any, any flue breaks? Is there any signs of spillage? Is there anything that leads you to believe that there's an issue with that appliance? Um, signs of spillage is a big one, really. Um, also, if the customer tells you, I, I, I always feel a bit nauseous or I feel like a headaches of an evening, or well, what, what do, you have, do you have any appliances running in the evening? Yeah, we have the fire on. It tends to be when the fire's on. Well, that, that's a sure fire indication that there might be an issue with the fire. Once you've conducted that investigation, your visual checks, what it asks you to do then is full 26.9 checks on any appliances. So any appliances in the property, first of all, you're visually inspecting them. And then what you need to do is your 26.9 checks. Now that's, again, we've discussed that on previous videos, fags, flu, so how do we test the flu? If it's an open fluid appliance, we need to be flu flow, spillage. If it's a room sealed appliance, we wanna be testing it with the flu gas analyzer. You know, we wanna be inspecting it throughout its length. Is the flu secured? Is there any signs of spillage around it? Um, 
that's then you've got your ventilation has the appliance got the relevant re ventilation gas supply is it gas rating properly is it has it got the correct burner pressures um, and then lastly safety devices is the, are, are the, the um, flame supervision devices working etc once you've done that have you identified any faults if you've identified any faults at all as well as your 26.9 checks what British Standard 7967 asks us to do is also sweep test each appliance. Engineers with CCM1 and Core, sorry, Core and, and SEMWAT and, and whatever, you know, the relevant competency, HDR1, CKR1, whatever it may be, they have the ability to sweep test an appliance and that's what British Standard 7967 asks us to do. So the procedure for carrying out a sweep test is using your analyzer you set it to measure CO in parts per million and what you do is you go around the appliance and its flue for two minutes and during that two minute period we expect at least a minimum of two full orbits of the of the appliance if you like so we're going around the appliance at least twice including potentially any flues any flue joints that might be in the loft or anything like that as well we need to, we need to pay particular attention to them um, once we if we measure any if we measure any rise in CO around the appliance, then that appliance then becomes suspect, and we need to deal with that at that point. So if we've done our sweep test and we, there's no rise in CO, but we've identified some faults, then we rectify them. And we and if we can't rectify them, we apply the unsafe situation procedure IGM G11. If we haven't found any faults. Then the next question is, are there any other appliances in the property that aren't gas? Is there any oil appliances? Is there any solid fuel appliances? If so, then we need to have a look at them and see if there's anything that jumps out at us. If there is, then we make sure that the appliance is off. We tell the customer that we, we tell the customer that they, they shouldn't use the appliance and that they should contact a competent engineer who can deal with that, that fuel source, i.e. off tech, head ass, whatever it may be. If, however, there are no gas appliances, there are no solid fuel or oil appliances or anything else in there, then what we need to ask ourselves is, is have we identified the source of the CO alarm activating? Have the issues been rectified? Can we say that as an engineer? If we haven't and we can't say that, then we need to basically identify, is this still going to be an issue? Is there still going to be potential for a future alarm? Is there still a smell that the customer is aware of? If so, basically we need to be getting an engineer there who has CMDDA1 or a relevant competency and they will do an ambient room test. The procedure for an ambient room test is available in British Standard 7967. However, the specialist equipment that and the specialist analyzers that um, engineers with those competencies carry um, and also the procedure is, is if you're not if you've not been trained in, in that procedure then realistically you shouldn't be carrying out that, that test um, obviously if the issue's been resolved then you don't really need to get involved in it but the point is your average engineer with core and the relevant appliance can carry out a sweep test and can play a vital role in identifying whether an appliance is producing CO if there is any grey area at all if the engineer is unable to be able to identify what the issue is then the engineer should be contacting somebody or referring the, the customer to somebody with CMD day one or an again a relevant competency in that in, in that in fumes investigation the other route and it's very similar is if there's a smell we saw before um, if there's a if we've got an alarm and the alarm's positioned correctly and whatnot then we go down the route of this point onwards so we've got and um, we establish whether the customer's got any any issues we you know we, we interview the customer for lack of a better phrase and we follow the same process whether it's an alarm activation or a report of fumes going back to the alarm side if we um, at the start where we said we've, we've pressed the button on the alarm but if the alarm doesn't activate then what we need to do is investigate the reasons why the alarm hasn't activated that could be it's not got a battery it's out of date we need to be looking at the, the data manufacturer expiry date and um, the batteries inside we need to be checking all these things to see is is there a reason why the alarm has you know isn't working we all know that most alarms chirp when the batteries are low 
It could be that the customers reported the alarm chirping because the batteries were low. Um, it also says, carry out a visual inspection of all appliances if you've identified the issue. And then after that, you're done. As long as you've not identified any issues with any appliances, you don't have to worry about anything further than that in, in regards to the alarms. Um, things to take in this video, really, we're gonna go to an appliance in a minute and show you the procedure for the sweep test. But also, you just need to understand that as an engineer, you are more than capable of sweep testing an appliance. You can carry out your 26.9 checks. You can do all of the above and you can deem whether an appliance is producing any sort of CO. The reason why a CMDDA1 engineer may be brought in is if we have, you know, your engineer hasn't, had, hasn't been able to identify the source. So it could be that there's migration, could be that might be another property and there's the CO migrating from that property into another one. It could be that there's you know, an, a busy road outside. There could be other sources external to the property that are creating the CO readings inside or causing the customer to be unwell or the alarm to activate. If that's the case, then a CMDD1 engineer, or again, another relevant competency um, qualified engineer, would be able to properly um, investigate the, that situation and um, without doubt, show the customer what the issue is. Um, thanks for watching, we'll go over and we'll do a sweep test on, the, uh, um, on another appliance now. So we're now gonna perform a sweep test on this appliance. This is a, um, a Potterton Assure. Now we've identified during visual inspections that this might be a suspect appliance. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna perform a sweep test. Now with a sweep test, it involves us going around the appliance and its flue twice over two minutes, a minimum of twice. If you go around a fit longer than that, more times than that, that's fine. But you wanna realistically aim for around two revolutions of the appliance over two, a two minute period. Um, First, we put the boiler into, into high rate or you know, high fire. Um, we're not going to do that on this, in this instance because this is more for demonstration purposes. But what we're doing is we're now going to use our 458. We're going to select CO, uh, room CO setting. We're going to select sweep test. And now we're going to press start. The boiler's in high fire. And then all we're going to do is rotate the probe over 120 seconds. keeping the probe roughly 100 mil away. Paying particular attention to any areas around the boiler that you may deem suspect. So any areas where you think you might, there might be discoloration or signs of spillage. Again, pay particular attention around the flue. Now you may notice that this appliance is a negative pressure appliance. So if this was a net of heat, for example, or another positive pressure appliance, then what we would be looking at doing is paying even more attention to seals and places like that. As well as testing seals, what we also want to do is look at things along the lines of um, parts of the boiler where you've got grommets and any part of the appliance where you may have breaks or you know part of the appliance wires or pipes going into the appliance pay, pay attention to the back of the unit as well And all we're making sure of is that we don't get any, any sign of CO or any, any CO in parts per million over 10. That's the test complete. Obviously we never got any CO parts per million. However, if we did get more than 10, that would call, be a cause of concern for us. Any, any rise really would give us cause for concern, especially on a room sealed appliance. Um, and that's your sweep test carried out. If your sweep test is deemed successful so you haven't had any rise or you haven't had any any form of co um picked up by the unit then you would move on and eventually 
if you never had any um, idea where the, the, the potential source of CO was coming from that set the alarm off or produced um, the, the symptoms for the customer, then you would enlist um, or you would ask a, an engineer with CMDD1 or equivalent to attend. Thank you very much for that, Michael. If you've got any questions, please put some comments below. As always, if you could put thumbs up on the video, really appreciate that. And if you want us to do any future videos, then again, please put some comments below. Let us know what type of videos you would like, and then we'll do whatever videos we can to help you. Thanks very much. Thanks for watching.